Welcome guys and girls to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss a brand new feature announced as part of Preinvent 2021 Lambda event filtering. Let's just understand how Lambda processes SQS messages. If you have a SQS queue and it's hooked up to a Lambda, what happens is the Lambda service pulls this SQS queue. Note that this Lambda service is not your application code. This is the internal AWS Lambda service. It periodically pulls this queue and if a message is found, then this Lambda service invokes your actual application Lambda and passes those messages. Then the message gets processed by your application Lambda. And once it is successfully processed, the message is deleted. I have a separate detailed video on how this Lambda service interacts with SQS and process messages. I'll give the link up top, check it out if interested. So if you have a bunch of messages sitting in the queue, the Lambda service will pass all those messages to your application Lambda. Now this new Lambda event filtering feature, what it does is it gives you the ability to filter messages based on particular values on the field of the messages. So if the filter condition is satisfied, Lambda service will send those messages to application Lambda and discard the remaining messages. This is an important point to keep in mind because one SQS queue can only be processed by one Lambda. So if some messages does not satisfy this filtering rule, they will be discarded. You cannot send some messages to one Lambda and other messages from the same queue to another Lambda based on different filtering criteria. This is how it differs from EventBridge, but more on that later. So which brings us to a couple questions. Why and when to use it? Are there any cost associated with it? And more importantly, how is it different than EventBridge rules because EventBridge has similar functionality? Let's start with why or when to use it. You can use this feature to reduce cost because your Lambda cost is dependent on number of application Lambda invocation, the amount of memory allocated to that Lambda and duration. Since with Lambda event filtering, you are only invoking the Lambda when needed, you reduce the number of invocation. Also, it makes the application code simpler. You do not have to write code to check certain fields and discard the message. Lambda service is doing that for you. And you can have up to 10 filtering rules per Lambda. By default, you can do five, but you can request AWS to increase up to 10. This feature is good when your Lambda receives massive number of messages. For example, if your Lambda is hooked to a DynamoDB stream and you want to selectively process some messages or your Lambda is receiving messages from some IoT sensor and then to SQS and most of the messages will be discarded, this feature will be very handy because it will reduce the cost drastically. Talking about cost, Lambda event filtering feature is free. Currently at release, it works with SQS, Kinesis data streams, and DynamoDB streams. How does the actual rules look like? The rules follow the same patterns as EventBridge. These are the rules. For example, if you want Lambda to process the message where the name is Alice, then you need to code the rule as name colon Alice. This is exactly how EventBridge rules work as well. I have a separate video with demo showing how EventBridge reacts to different rules. I'll give the link up top as well, so check it out if interested. Let's jump into the console real quick and check out how you configure this. So I have this Lambda which just processes SQS messages. To add trigger, you click add trigger. Then let's say for example, I want to select SQS. I select my test Lambda filter queue. To set config rules, you click additional setting and this is the section that's added with this feature filter criteria. And you can code the rules here, for example, name Alice, and you can add additional rules. Like I mentioned, you can have up to five rules out of the box. To add the rules, click add. The trigger along with the rules will be displayed under the configuration tab. If I click the details, it shows the rule that we just set. I'll give the link to the official blog post in the description. 
This blog post will show you how you can configure this rule for Kinesis and DynamoDB streams. So what is the difference of this feature with event bridge rules? Lambda event filtering rules are on the consumer side or on the Lambda side. Lambda service is processing, checking those rules, discarding messages if the rules do not fit and sending the appropriate messages that fits the filtering criteria to the Lambda. With event bridge, the rules are on the event bus and you can have up to 300 rules and each rule can invoke up to five targets. So here is the important distinction of event bridge rules than Lambda event filtering. So as we mentioned, Lambda event filtering, if the messages do not satisfy the rule, the messages will be discarded. But with event bus, you can have multiple rules sending messages to multiple targets. If some messages satisfy certain criteria, they could be sent to Lambda one, but for other messages which satisfy some other criteria, or if you want to have a catch all rule, they could be sent to another Lambda. No messages need to be discarded. On top of that, EventBridge can also archive your messages, replay those messages, and you also have a schema registry where the message schema can be saved and downloaded to be used in your code. Also, EventBridge integrates with many AWS services. In this diagram, I'm just showing Lambda, API Gateway, Step Function, SQS, and SNS. But in addition to that, there are a lot of other AWS services that even Bus can integrate with. I have a separate detailed video on the difference between SQS, SNS, and even Bridge Deep Dive. I'll give the link up top, check it out if interested. All right, this is how you use this new Lambda event filtering feature. Also, reInvent 2021 is upon us. reInvent is the biggest cloud event where AWS releases a lot of new features and exciting new services. I'm going to drink a lot of coffee, stay up late, and release these tutorials as soon as new exciting feature gets released. So please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the videos. Also, tomorrow is Cyber Monday. All my courses in Udemy are on sale. Use the coupon code Cyber Monday while checking out. This includes newly released bestseller system design course, highest rated Kubernetes with EKS course, serverless course, and infrastructure as code with CloudFormation course. As always, thanks for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please click subscribe, ask me any questions in the comment section, and share this channel with your friends and family. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.